Radha Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Parivraja Kacharyam Ashtota Sarasvesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Kota Vaishnavinda Ki Lord Chaitanya Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Shri Brihat Madanga Ki Shri Shinitai Sachi Sutta Ki Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Sabhadra Ki Sri Sri Radha Parasishwara Ki Gaura Premanandi All glorious to the assembled devotees All glorious to Sri Guru and Garanga All glorious to Sri Prabhupada Nama Om Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namani Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvasesha Sunyavari Pastachari Shatayana Jai Sri Prabhupada Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Which one? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam and this is the chapter um, de dealing with Lord Shiva saves the universe. Quite good, eh? Quite relevant for a Prabhupada book marathon. Yes. Lord Shiva saves the universe. It is. I mean, it's very, very relevant. You shouldn't diminish or, let's say, be any way. Um, let's understand Lord Shiva's business is to save the universe, as is all a great devotee's business, is to save the universe. Mm -hmm. So this is text number uh, 39, is that right? Yes. 39, Canto 8, Chapter 7 um, of this Srimad Bhagavatam. Please repeat. Pranayip, Svaihip, Praninahap, Pantip, Sadavahap, Kshanap, Bhangurayip, Badavayeshu, Bhuteshu, Mohiteshu, Atmamayaya, Pranay Sway Pranina Pranti, Pranay Sway Pranina Pranti, Sadabakshana Bangurai, Badavareshu Bhuteshu, Mohiteshvatma Mayaya, Pranay Sway Pranina Panti, Sadavakshana Bangurai, Badavareshu Bhuteshu, Mohiteshvatma Mayaya, Panay Svay Praninak Panti Sadavakshana Bangurai Badavayreshu Bhuteshu Mohiteshvatma Mayaya Pranayasvai 
Uteshu Mohiteshvatmamayaya Pranak Swapranai Panti Pranase Pranina Panti Maya Many ladies. Sadavakshana Bangurai Badavai Shubuteshu Mohite Shratma Maya Panayi by lives. Um, we're going to really apologize to anyone who's French speaking because our marathon is beginning today. We're not apologizing for that, by the way. <laughs> but what we are apologizing for is that we really don't have time for English and then French translation. So it would be nice if somebody who's good um, can, I don't know how it worked. We did this in New Mayapur the other day, that they were translating, Chitralila was translating into the background, in the background, online, live, to the French speaking audience. She was doing it live. Live is that. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't know how it works. But uh, she did it the other day in the class I gave in New Mayapur because we had short timing. And I really don't know how it worked, but she did it. Right. Somehow or another. As I was speaking, she was speaking simultaneously into a, mo a mobile phone in French. And people could hear it. Just they could only hear the French online if they wanted to. Like that. They could do, I don't know how it worked. I just don't know. Live, it was oh, it was recording, was it? Okay, okay. Well, there would probably be a way of doing that, but that's probably quite technical. Yeah, quite technical. It can be done, but it has to be probably technically organized. It's um, pretty high tech, probably, with particular machinery. I don't know. But it's something to think about. We're not very big right now. There's probably not that many devotees online, if any who don't speak English. There will probably be some. In New Mayapur there are quite a few. So, uh, translation. Um, and now, who is speaking here? It's like Lord Shiva. This is Lord Shiva speaking. This is a change in person speaking here. People in general, being bewildered by the illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are always engaged in animosity toward one another. But devotees, even at the risk of their own temporary lives, try to save them. Amazing verse, huh? Mm -hmm. To start the marathon. It's kind of like, yeah. I, no, this is the verse in order. It's not the selected verse. I didn't even know what it was until I just opened the book here. But it's so relevant, isn't it? Yes. It's like spot on. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Let's see what Prabhupada says about this verse. This is the characteristic of a Vaishnava. Para Dukkha Dukhi. A Vaishnava is always unhappy to see the conditioned souls unhappy. Otherwise, he would have no business teaching them how to become happy. We see that the, maybe they're also feeling like that, but the topmost devotees, the Paramahamsas, the Uttama Bhagavats, they may not act on that. Uh, they see things from a different angle, the permanent, eternal angle, you could say, beyond and above the temporary nature of this world. Their presence in this world may purify the world, no doubt, but they don't necessarily outwardly preach that process. Um, of devotional service or how people can become genuinely happy. But we see, and it is there in the case of all genuine, even Uttama Bhagavat devotees who may not preach, their heart is feeling like that, like Gorky Shodas, Babaji, or 
their heart is in is bleeding in, in you know, but their role is not to go out and ple and preach mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. But they empower others to do so. Mm -hmm. So Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj or Harshil Prabhupada are typical examples mm -hmm. of these vice lords, Prabhupada calls them, representatives of the Lord who make it their life's mission to try to connect, wake up other conditioned souls by whatever works, whatever method works. Um, so we we'll read on. Otherwise, they have no business if they weren't feeling that pain, paradukaduki. You know, if you don't feel anything for others, you don't. It's like, you know, if you're driving a car in Paris, you can almost guarantee that, you know, at least in this part of Paris, that you're going to be requested by many beggars mm -hmm. yes. for whatever. They want money or whatever it is, you know. Um, and some people don't care a damn, and some people feel real bad, and they feel real bad. I'm one of those type of people who feel real bad if I have nothing to give them. Yeah. And I'm not going to give them money because they'll misuse it, but something, an apple, a banana, a, a biscuit, or something. You know what I mean? Uh, but some people will don't care less. They, say, Get the, they should be arrested, they should be kicked out. Different people will feel differently about it. You know? So we got that from Prabhupada, maybe from other places too and before, but that feeling of, you know, when, mm -hmm. even physically when people are suffering, you feel pain. Mm -hmm. And most people have got that. Mm -hmm. Probably everyone's got it to some extent, but mostly it's a bit selfish. It's not very broad or extensive. It's usually more, like someone said the other day when, I don't know, you know, I mean, I won't say what, 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 but they said I prefer this group than that group. Some quarrel was going on. You know. So um, we, we take sides, ten, tendency is to take sides, you know. You know, this is good, this is bad. But the pure devotee doesn't see like that. He sees everyone suffering and everyone's a, a candidate to be delivered. Everyone. They, everyone needs it. Even if they are exploiting others and the others are being exploited or cheated and cheated, cheater and cheated, whatever you call it. A pure devotee sees, he doesn't discriminate that these people need help, those people should be punished. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see it like that. He sees they're all in ignorance and they all need help. Mm -hmm. You have to discriminate on how you go about delivering, of course you do. But the principle is, you know, equality, Krishna consciousness is this, the gift that everyone should be given. But obviously not everyone's ready to receive it and we're not ready to... You see, we don't have necessarily the potency to uh, break through the bar barriers which they have uh, to awaken that, uh, you know, realization or that desire in their hearts. But it will come. Um, in materialistic life, people must certainly engage in activities of animosity. Material life is therefore compared to samsara davanala. But what does that mean, samsara davanala? What does that mean? Samsara dava nalalita loka. Every day, if you're here, you sing it. Blazing fire of material the blazing fire of material existence for birth and death. This material world is like a blazing fire. Wherever you go, it's a fire. You know, most people are just, they're trying to put the fire out by pouring a little bit of a bucket of water on it or something. You know, the whole forest is ablaze and you're throwing a bucket of water on it. You know, some little. Effort. I mean, you could say it's a good motivation, but it's not very intelligent. It doesn't solve the problem. Look, the fire is still there. Still there. Even if you have a big fire and you throw, you know, a wet cloth on it, okay, it'll slightly have some of it, but it won't last very long. So all these efforts to solve problems are, they don't know what the real cause of the blazing fire is, first of all. And then secondly, they don't really know how to put it out. Even what it is, most people don't even recognize that they're in a blazing fire. Um, a blazing forest fire. Lord Shiva and his followers in the Parampara system try to save people from the dangerous condition of materialistic life. This is the duty of devotees following the principles of Lord Shiva and belonging to the Rudra Sampradaya. It's their duty. As Lord Shiva saves the universe from the poison, the whole universe is poisoned. It's not just, you know, hala hala, this poison in the ocean. The whole universe is basically poisoned. And we're poisoned too. Maybe slightly less degree or whatever it may be. And we, we 
At least we have the opportunity to know what the cure of that poison is, as they say when you get bitten by a snake. Right, Bhuvan? You're bitten by a snake there? Have you just been bitten by a snake? No, no, no. You sure not? Sleep is likened to the snake bite. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're tired because you're a working man. You were, didn't expect... What happened? I thought you were, I didn't know you were staying here last night. It was an emergency. I had to come because I was shifting to another place. Oh, okay. So, so you were inside. overloaded yesterday. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, you know, they, the Prabhupada gives example. It's not just Prabhupada's example. It's a known example that, you know, there are mantras to cure snake bites, right? Mm. There are people who know verse mantras. It's amazing. You can, incredible how it works. But they can cure, you know, the, the effects of snake bite by mantras. And they can cure, control snakes by mantras, of course they can. But it is a powerful medicinal effect. So, you know, the whole universe is basically poisoned. So the same thing, there's a mantras, mantra, to cure the disease condition of the universe. Right? This is Oshidi, Baba Oshidi. The medicine to cure the people of this uh, poisonous effects of, of false identity or material conditioning. Birth, death as a result of that. Um, this is the only solution. In this, uh, in, in, everything else is just a person has been poisoned and you're giving him a cigarette. Okay, they might feel, thank you so much, you know. Or you're just fanning them or something. They've got a fever and you stand there fanning them. Yeah, but maybe they feel a bit cooler, but they're still diseased, you know. Problem's not been removed at all. Just scratching and itching. But it's not removing the cause. The problem is not dealt with at all. Not at all. Only an effect. But they have no idea what the cause is. Devotees, are, they, yeah, they're, they're, they certainly are sad to see the effects, that people are suffering the effects. But they don't just you know, go around crying and, oh, don't worry, I'll put a bandage on that. No, they, they get to the cause so that people don't have to suffer anymore. Remove the very cause itself, not just the effect. But you see people who get sick with some, say, sexual disease, maybe syphilis or gonorrhea, gonorrhea or whatever it's called. Now we have other things which may not be curable, but all kinds of things, because their behavior is, is, is inappropriate, is illicit. So you may cure the disease, but, but unless you change their mentality, they do it again. A prisoner or a criminal is the same. Ninety, say, I mean, whatever our devotee is, is the... Uh, Principal of a drug rehabilitation center. He's retired now, but he was for 40 years. Principal of a drug rehabilitation center in Malaysia. And he said 99% of them go back to drugs again when they get out. 99%. So is it really working? Maybe for a few people that's going to happen anyway. People give up drugs even if you don't have a drug rehabilitation center. It's almost, you know, it's... It's a good idea, but it doesn't work. Maybe for a few, but generally it doesn't work. One has to get, why are you a drug addict? Why are you a thief? Why? Oh, it's because of my parents. It wasn't because of your parents. You are responsible. Until you realize you're not this body, you would never solve it. Never. We'll be wandering this world for eternity. That's why you're Nitya Bada. Yes, we have, we, are, we have no idea who we are. Even we're still acting like we're this body and mind. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, right? Yes. We talk, 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 but we're acting as if we're the, this is me. And I'm going to serve me. Mm -hmm. I am God. Basically, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. And that is the cause of all the problem. Mm -hmm. Everyone sees themselves in the center as the enjoyer. Mm -hmm. There is no peace. Bhukturam yagatapasam sarvaloka maheshram. Unless we realize this, there is no peace. Full stop. Just a dream of peace. But it's not a reality. Unless we actually make this progress. So we're not on that path. Well, we follow somebody who is. Who is really paradukudukhi because they realize what's going on. Lord Shiva realizes what's going on. He doesn't just see, oh, wait, now we've got to see. That's also there. But he sees the whole picture of the conditioned nature of this world and the conditioned souls in this world and what's necessary, what's necessary 
to, first, to deliver, to liberate the living entities from this illusion, wake them up from their dream. Don't just make the dream nice. Everyone else wants to make the dream nice, right? I want a nice dream. God, give me a nice dream. And make my suffering nicer, please. Oh, you're in the prison. Please give me nice facilities so they can be happy in the prison. That's what they're doing. Simple as that. And Lord Shiva and his followers, they, they're supposed to save people. That's very dangerous. Sometimes it's even more dangerous when, than not knowing anything. You misuse. And then you abuse. And then you lose. This, this, this Prabhupada says, this is the duty of devotees following the principles of Lord Shiva and belonging to the Rudra Sampadaya. There are four Vaishnava Sampadayas and the Rudra Sampadaya is one of them because Lord Shiva Rudra is the best of the Vaishnavas. Because he thinks like this. It's not a matter of, you know, the best of Vaishnavas because he knows how to put tilak on nicely and how to offer arti perfectly and he knows all the verses from the Shastra and he's very regulated and no, not because of that. We sometimes judge on these externals. It's the heart. The heart. The best of the Vaishnava is just thinking how to bring pleasure to Srimati Radharani, who is pained to see that Krishna's parts and parcels are behaving in a way an animosity towards the will of Krishna. Preaching means to follow that mood of Radharani. And the pure devotees have that mood. They're not just executors of activities which are appearing to be, you know, favorable or pleasing to others, or whatever, but their only motivation is to satisfy the will of Radharani, manifest in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Have you had enough? You have to go. Where are your books? You have some books for distribution? Sorry? Oh, you're one of the ones he gave books to. Yes. I thought he was doing it. I thought he was doing all these books. He's not doing anything. He's just going and giving books to everyone else to distribute. What is this? So I need to know how many books do you, who he gave to. and because. Okay, and everybody else, who did he give to? They, that, 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 you're the one distributing the books, not him. Otherwise, I'm the one giving to him, so I get the books. And he gives them to you, and he gets. And you give them to someone else, and you get. Everyone gets. This way, I can give you 100 Bhagavad Gita's, okay? 100 books distributed. You can give them to Ronchalo, 100 books distributed. You can give them to uh, Mahananda, 100 books distributed. 400 books distributed. And we've done nothing. Great. I want to hear you, you distribute 10 books, okay? Make a note, make a note, Mananda. Bhuvan, ten books. Yeah. We have to find out who the other ones are. He's a character, oh, isn't he? He's a clever boy. Yeah. Tamal Krishna, 140 medium books. And didn't do one. <laughs> clever. Hmm. That's a good trick. Hmm. Nanda, you better watch out here, boy. <laughs> i got a few friends around here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push you this marathon. <laughs> no, don't worry. What are you going to do with them? What, what are you going to do with the books? I distribute to the people I know about others. Someone going to pay for this? I gave him a task, but that's not the task I gave him to do with the books. So. <laughs> Who's going to pay for them? Oh. I'll have to ask him and see. For, for the books I've taken... Uh, I you're going to pay? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay, don't give it to Tamal, whatever you <laughs> He's a clever man, he's from Bang Bengal. Very clever, he's Bengal. And there's great. Well, I wish you all the best in your book distribution. We can give you ten more tomorrow, okay? <laughs> ten books a day, that will be only 35, three, I mean, 350 books. That's pretty good. If everyone does 350 books, I just wrote a letter to the Philippine after they want me to, to, they want to, they haven't done a marathon for 15 years since I last was there in December and we did the marathon. <coughs> so this year they've decided we're going to try to do something. 
They have to pay, by the way, they're one of the poorest countries in the world, they have to pay twice as much as you for the books. Can you believe it? They have to pay like five euros for one bag of Agita to get it. From the Australian BBT, they have to pay all the shipping. Then there's a tax to get it in the country. And they can't bring much in, so the shipping is phenomenal. They haven't got any money. They said, like, catch 22. So we're trying to negotiate it with the BBT to some, find some way around it. But anyway, I said, if, if everyone, if 100 devotees do one book a day, that's 100 books a day. That's not bad. And if you do 100 books a day, that's 3, 000, over 3,000 books, which is 3,000 books more than you've been doing in previous Decembers. <laughs> it's pretty good. So we can all do one book a day. Imagine if 1,000 devotees do one book a day. We'll do 30,000 books here, more, 35,000 books in France. And if they do 10 a day, we'll do 350,000 books. We just have to get 1,000 devotees to do 10 books a day. And if you do 100 books a day, we'll do, what, what does that work out? How many? 350,000 books. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be challenging Pune. <laughs> and New Delhi. And all these other places. Right? Yeah. We know all about that. They do like... Pune's target is half a million Gitas. Half a million. He told me yesterday. Huh? This time 600,000. What? 600,000 this time. Who? Pune. He told me five yesterday. No, six. Maharaj gave six. Gopalish Maharaj. Five. Oh, he put it up. Huh? Okay, well, that, I, I just asked Kanai Krishna yesterday, how many are you going to do? He said their target's five. Six. So it's up to six. He's already put it up to six. 600,000, okay. 600,000 Mahapig books. Mm. Not all Gitas, I just do. We'll finish the purport and then I'll read a little bit and say a few things. Uh, even another line. Did, 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 did. Yeah, Lord Shiva, there are four Vaishnava Sampradayas and the Ruta Sampradaya is one of them because Lord Shiva is the best of the Vaishnavas. Indeed, as we shall see, Lord Shiva drank all the poison for the benefit of humanity. They also take on, is one of the Vaishnavas, uh, can someone take this please? They take on, you know, the devotee takes on reactions for the world. Preachers don't realize that you're actually delivering the world in another way too. And because you're connected to a pure devotee, the line of disciplic succession, it's okay. You know, Krishna takes it. But the devotee is very, we talk to especially pure devotees of the Lord. They suffer for the suffering of the living entities of this world. Not just their disciples, they see everyone as Krishna's servant. And they, f they feel the pain of that, and they take that load on their own path. Just you look at Vasudev Dutta. Of course, no one can compare to Vasudev Dutta. I mean, he's like exceptional. Probably said he's millions of, Lord Jesus would only have to do certain, we're not going to compare from our angle, but Lord Jesus had a certain role to do, but his role was only up to a certain point. But Vasudev Dutta's was absolute. Please let me, let all the living entities, every single one, even if they're in a cell, let them all go back to Godhead. Let me stay for eternity and suffer the mountains of, not mountains, you can't even compare it, the unending load of their karma. But just please deliver them, my Lord. Can you imagine? And he meant it. He wasn't just saying it to get impression, to, be, to impress others. He meant it. He was willing to suffer it for eternity, unending reactions for the sake of the, all the living entities. So they, this is a Vaishnava, he wants to see others. He wants to see others, you know, he feels unqualified. Others are more qualified even. Even Prabhupada said at one time, he was asked, are you the spiritual master of this movement? He said, I'm not qualified. This is not recorded. I'm not qualified. These young men and women, they are qualified. I'm just trying to help them to wake up, to understand that. My only business, are you the spiritual master of this movement? He said, no, I'm trying to serve this movement. They're thinking, everyone else is qualified. I'm not. My only business is to serve them in whatever way it is. This is the mood of Yudhisthira. This is the mood of all pure devotees. They don't see I am qualified. They see themselves as being just simply fortunate to be engaged in the service of one who is qualified. That's all. And that's how it works. That's the Sampradaya. Then you can become empowered. I'll just read a few things and mention a few things. I don't want to go on too long this morning. Uh, let me just close this page a minute. 
a bit of a rush every day is a bit of a rush. Maybe when Goranga Prem is supposed to come tomorrow, I'm hoping he'll take on a lot of, you know, the usual services in coordinating and helping to back up facilities and so on. Because it's a small, but there's a lot to do. It's amazing. If, even if you've got a hundred devotees, or you've got five devotees, the same basic things have to be done. Just the quantity increases, but it's not as much as, you know, the number of devotees, because all the records, and everything has, still has to be there. Uh, let me see. Where are we? Okay, I'll just read a few things. I don't know where, what page we're on here. Okay, it's probably the next page. That was the last one. Okay, I'll start here. This is Rameshwar. You may have heard of Rameshwar. Yes. He was probably in the 70s the most dynamic uh, motivator for book distribution. Himself, he, was, he, he started a, the marathon rolling practically in 72 in his new Brahmachari. Um, but uh, he became the B main BBT trustee for Eskon, and he would send out mon monthly newsletters, which really motivated everybody. And really dynamic personality. Even today, I mean, he drifted away. He's right back in there again now, inspiring devotees to distribute Prabhupada's books again. Very humble, extremely humble. Right back in there, you know, encouraging younger devotees in book distribution. Anyway, he was traveling with Prabhupada probably in 76 or 7. He was Prabhupada's secretary for a while. And he, and Prabhupada was talking a lot about war. War is probably a big topic. I don't know. I'm not in touch right now, actually, uh, of the world. I was in touch with it daily for a while, but decided to forget that. So I, don't, I guess it's still going on. Is it still going on, Bhuvan? You are a man of the world. Hmm. Is the war still going on, or whatever you want to call it? Some people don't call it a war. In Israel or ja what's it called, Gaza? Yes, Maharaj, but I don't think it's, uh, it, was, it is not that severe as it was in the beginning. Okay, so it's kind of faded into the background a little bit. Is that what's happened? Yes. Just like the Ukraine one. But they're always coming up. There's always war going on somewhere, fighting going on somewhere. Critical situations. There are different types of wars. There's the social war, there's the economic wars, and there's physical wars, and all kinds of wars. But uh, this is going on. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like just a matter of time before something gets out of control completely. Then uh, Prabhu was talking about war. Then he said, but there is possibility that this war may be averted. It depends on your book distribution. He continued to say, your book distribution is creating a spiritual environment throughout the whole world. And that will awaken spiritual sentiments in everyone's heart. And as that awakens, as you continue this book distribution, that spiritual sentiment may bring down communism from within. That was a time when communism and capitalism were like, it was a cold war. I mean, you don't know what it was like. I mean, even up to 1980. I remember seeing signs of it. Was, it was the, actually 1980 was probably the peak of the Cold War, probably, 80, 81. Everywhere in England, people were selling you know, radioactive suits, um, uh, nuclear shelters. It was like one of the, it was, you know, easily, people were buying it like anything. Devotees were even marketing these things. It was like everyone was paranoid. There were signs up what to do when the bomb goes off, not if, when. There were signs up. People were paranoid. You don't know what it was like. It was a really intense time, you know, fanatics, you know, about to, one press of a button, boom, that's all it would have taken. And the boss had the finger on the button. It was that close sometimes. And, uh, you know, I mean, that just before that, it was also when Prabhupada's talking here, just basically at that time, about the apparent, because of communism, capitalism, it was like so intense. But he said, your book distribution may change the heart and bring down this communism, which is the major, you know, let's say, can't, they're both, <laughs> whatever they are. But, you know, that clash was there. Communist, capitalist. People were the same in one sense, but they were either in one or in the other. You were either this side or that side. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada was saying that your book distribution can change the heart from within and communism can dissolve. And that's what happened. 
a few years later, communism just kind of, at least in the Western, or a, most of the world, not all of it, but most of it, it kind of faded out. It like evaporated almost overnight, all of a sudden. And you may know that in the main newspaper, the main newspaper in Russia is called the TASS, what it was, daily newspaper, the biggest one. Headlines, the greatest threat to communism in Russia, Hare Krishna. With headlines of the TASS newspaper in the 70s or early 80s, I don't know when it was, sometime like that. So, you know, it, they, they knew it. It, and it, it was spreading in such a way, in different ways. Uh, somehow or another, it was having some, uh, they were affected by it. They were scared of it. That's why there was such a, a challenge against the Hare Krishnas by the communists. Then Prabhupada said, yes, and future historians will note how communism failed because of your book distribution. They succeeded, the communist Prabhupada gives a note. Uh, I used to, when I was in Africa, I was going to the printers, we were trying to print some Swahili literatures and stuff. And the printer was a Scotsman. He, he was very enthusiastic to get to people to print books, I must say, but we didn't have a problem with that at all. He was very happy to meet someone who was very enthusiastic to print books. So he, he said, you know, he gave the example, you know, Karl Marx, you know, Karl Marx is usually in, accredited to the philosophy behind communism. There are other Tolstoy, I don't know, different ones, I don't know who they are. But he was the main philosopher, I think, behind it. Um, and he, Karl Marx said, we will conquer the world with 26 metal soldiers. Only 26. And you probably know who they are. Who were those 26 metal soldiers? We used to have metal soldiers when we were kids, that was our toy. But it wasn't those type of metal soldiers. Who were the 26 metal soldiers? The letters? You're right. Yeah. The letters of the alphabet. Oh. In English. Mm. Or, I don't know, English, French, I don't know, maybe you've got different That's marks. Good. But basically, yeah, in basically, I don't know the name of these type of languages. I think all these languages, Spanish, French, mm. English, mm. I can't say all, I don't know all, but maybe German, I don't know. There are 26 letters. Now they have different, you know, markings, but basically there are 26 letters. Mm -hmm. We will conquer the world. Those days is not like now. They didn't have this digital system. Everything was, was called letterpress printing. You had to take these little metal, little letters and stick them in a box, mm -hmm. letter uh, in a print box like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the, th the thing would come along, pick that up, and boom on the paper, boom on the paper on the paper. A slow process and many mistakes. You had to get every letter in the right way and it had to be the old back, back to front, basically speaking. So it's a whole science in letterpress. When he was around, that was a system of printing. We will conquer the world with this 26 metal soldiers. By the way, he was, his idea was England was going to be the center of communism. Not Russia, England. That was his intention. It didn't, it went different directions, but it was a fact. In India, millions and millions of people were influenced just by reading the communist literature, which they pushed into India like anything. They didn't even send one person there, they just sent literature. Even in, 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 even in China, it was the literature which, which caused the, the revolution. He told me that also, he said that that's how the communists really influenced China. They were just distributing books profusely in China. Christians were just shouting on the corner, Jesus is the way, and so on. And the communists are flooding the country with their publicity. Anyway, that's what he said. They will note how a revolution, a spiritual revolution throughout human society took place. This is Prabhupada's mood. He's not just doing his thing. He envisions a spiritual revolution. We're still doing our thing. You know? we, don't, we haven't caught on to that spirit quite. Some of you are catching it and caught it maybe, but most of them like me haven't caught it. But it's a spiritual revolution. Srila Prabhupada is ecstatically receiving the Sanctan newsletter as well as your monthly report showing how book distribution is doubling. 
Every report which we receive and which I read to him is literally, ec he is ecstatic about it. I did ask him, Srila Prabhupada, you are not disturbed by my having to read these reports to you, are you? Now, in 1977, this may be from 70, there's no date given. Or this, yeah, it's 77. This in Prabhupada was in London. This is possibly what happened then, or maybe somewhere else just before. But it happened in London also. One, some devotees were saying, this is disturbance, Prabhupada's sick, you shouldn't disturb him with this. And uh, Pratamal asked Prabhupada, said, no, this is, this is not at all a disturbance to me. This is the greatest medicine for my sickness, to hear how these books, and he didn't see they're my books, they're Krishna's books, are being distributed all over the world. This brought him great happiness, even though he is physically finished, basically speaking. Prabhupada said, book distribution is my life. If book distribution increases, I will never die. Mm -hmm. I will be living for centuries. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we understand that's not physical. It's a, 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 it has a spiritual understanding. The property is present in these books. That's, that's what he's given. He's not given him, you know, me, here I am, and when I'm gone, that's it, finished. No. Pure devotees leave. They leave themselves, basically. They leave the boat. By the grace of a pure devotee, we can go back to God, but they basically leave themselves in this world in the form of their legacy, in the form of their literature, their instructions, etc. They never leave. And we can follow Prabhupada as much now as ever before. Let's see if there's something else we'll just read before we finish. So today is officially the first day of our marathon here in France. At least that's what we've told everybody. That's another problem. Jumped in yesterday. Mm -hmm. Got a did really a really nice day. He went in underground, as you probably know, in the Chatelet, you know, in the shopping mall down down below. Yeah. And no problems, huh? Mm -hmm. He was very bold. That was really bold. Because oh. mm -hmm. uh, he had his pants on. He didn't go in a dohi. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were probably looking out for people in these bed sheets, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But a uh, very good idea, because it's raining most of the day. So. The sales figure probably said, this is my only solace in my life. When I hear that my books are selling nicely, I become like a young man. Mm. That was also at the manor, probably said that. There is no comparison. There is no literature throughout the world. I don't know why blue, oh, that's a mistake. Okay, I'll go on. That's to do with the Bhagavad Purnima on that one. Bhagavad Tan. Where are we now? I missed some of them. Okay, we've got to go step back a little bit here. Actually, this book the production is most important. You have pleased me very much. Just go on and flood the whole world with these Krishna books. There are so many quotations of Srila Prabhupada on book distribution. As you know, and we'll daily we'll read a few. Our, book, our preaching work will be measured by the quantity of books we distribute, so continue ever increasingly. Take care the devotees do not become sick. They should always be properly clothed and fed. That's also very important, so make sure you have enough clothes. If you don't, then of course when Garanga Prem comes, you'll be, at least you'll be coordinating that. And we'll buy whatever is required or give you money or whatever it is to get your socks or hats or gloves or coats or whatever it is you need, or bedding. And the prasadam, that's something which also has to be arranged. You'll also be coordinating, basically, with me, behind the scene, that one too. I hope today there's some prasadam for the devotees to take out, those who are able to go out today. Is there anything for them to take out on Sankirtan? I hope it's not just leftovers from yesterday. <laughs> They organize organized. Organized, yeah. okay. Don't waste things if you can. And uh, it's nice if there's something when you come back. Don't forget the bread, which we gave you five or eight loaves or whatever it was yesterday. For the, that includes the ladies, by the way. It's not just for the men. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some cookies, mainly for distribution to yourself. I mean to the public. <laughs> I do have a bag of warm clothes upstairs as well. Some, not everything, but 
lots of socks, at least that much. So if anyone's really sockless, or the, whatever it is, it can probably give you a sock or two. You don't mind mixed socks, do you? One blue and one <laughs> green, and looks good. <laughs> Last year, someone bought socks. I gave them some ladies. They were like this big. <laughs> and the ladies' feet were like this big, and the socks were about this big. They were like stockings, you know. <laughs> the heel was like halfway up their leg, you know. <laughs> anyway, we got we're a bit better equipped this year, I think. And uh, Hare Krishna. Um, where's my notebook? A couple of points. And then we're finished. I think. Books are on the auto, Jai. Remind us all. Books on auto. Targets. Quotes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. So, uh, yeah, well, this is, as you know, this is the Live to Give campaign. I think that's what Vaishya Shikha Prabhu is. And not everyone goes by that. There's like, there's two tiers going on in, you know, in terms of let's say, emphasis, and Live to Give campaign starts in September 20th, 30th, 29th, up to the beginning of January, January the 9th or something, which is like, but that's just their own creation. The Prabhupada Book Marathon starts when you start and ends when it ends. It's not got a defined, it used to have a defined date, but now some of those have already started. In London, they started four days ago on the 24th. Some started earlier. I think in Atlanta they started what date do they start? 12th of November, I think, something like that, on their marathon. Others start later, and they finish later. And so our marathon is whatever you can do, but it's basically the period between the 28th of November and the 31st of December, is our basic timing. Mm -hmm. We generally find, by the way, just for your interest, the last week of the month is the best week. Mm -hmm. Last week we did Almost one, more than one, we did more than one third of our books in the last week of December after Christmas. Yeah. It's funny, it's become a common thing now. The cities are busier after Christmas than they are before. People save their money because there's sales after Christmas. <laughs> so they do their shopping after Christmas, not before. <laughs> I guess that's one of the motives. I don't know. But it's, it's one of those things, so bear that in mind. But don't wear yourselves out completely. Enter like a pin, come out like a plow. What are our targets? Well, I just sent out yesterday on the WhatsApp group that uh, we're, I believe it or not, at this point of time, for the first 11 months of the year, we're approximately 200 book points ahead of what we were at this moment last year, mm -hmm. for the whole year. Don't say Harry Ball too loudly because, you know, I mean, this year we've, we haven't got nearly as many uh, you know, expectations as we had last year in terms of the marathon. Mm -hmm. We don't even know if Sunderwoods are gonna take part at all yet. The biggest book distributor last year, we don't even know if they're gonna do anything this year. Mm -hmm. Our second or third biggest book distributor after Rasananda is also not with us this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's quite a lot of devotees, we just don't know. They haven't really made it clear or they're not taking part at all this year. So. You know, we don't forget last year we just received 800 sets of Bhagavatams and most of the people got their books during the, who paid already received their books during December. Mm -hmm. 115 Bhagavatam sets were distributed last year during December. Mm -hmm. That alone is what, 8,000 book points plus. Not only that, but we distributed over 3,000 small Arabic books last year. And we know who did those. And they're not, well, partly here. That's Amanda's here and everyone did a bit, but the three main book distributors of Arabic books, we're not even sure if they're going to be, well, one of them, that's Amanda probably Krishna Grace is with us, but we're not sure. So 3,000 Arabic books was another nine, nine almost 10,000 book points there. So that's more than half of what we did last year. We're not sure if we're going to do any of that or very little. So bear that in mind. So we're going to really have to pray and surrender mm -hmm. if we want to, you know, we'll do what we can. And we're not, we're not, we're aim, we're not attached. We try and do our best and depend on Krishna. So 
But it's nice, but Vaisheshika sets goals and Prabhupada also like these goals, it's incentive to push us forward. Although we tend to be lazy, the mode of ignorance is all pervasive and we just get, ah, who cares anyway? No, one li- no one's interested. It doesn't make no difference. What difference does it make? Nobody's interested. We don't realize the power of giving someone a book. Their lives are changed for eternity. Not only their lives, everyone who sees the book, everyone who touches the book, everyone comes in contact with the book, the book sits in their room, it purifies the room, it purifies the house, it purifies the neighborhood. It takes a long time because they're so covered. But Prabhupada said we're here to plant seeds, we're not just here to eat fruit, we're here to plant seeds. Planting seeds, millions of seeds, and there's millions of new people every day on this planet being born. There's always new people. Okay, I'm going to finish there for today and maybe, maybe, maybe not be more prepared next time. But today's verse was quite a phenomenal verse. I mean, I never even noticed that verse in it. All the readings of Bhagavatam ever noticed it before. Mm-hmm. It just happened to be Krishna's arrangement for the class this morning. So don't forget Lord Shiva. Mm-hmm. Anyone got any false ego? <laughs> How much? Colin Charlie doesn't have any. <laughs> you got a lot? Yeah. Good. So Lord Shiva, who is Lord Shiva? He controls the fossil. Mm. Don't forget. He has a Veda Chara of course has appeared. He's also Lord Shiva in that form. But that spirit, that mood. Lord Shiva is here to help us. Therefore, we re- highly respect Lord Shiva. We don't worship on the altar, different mood. But we highly worship, we worship him as Panchata, in the Panchata. And, uh, you know, it's important for our false ego. And most of the time, we, we, really, we really live on the false ego. Most of the time. Rarely do we see Krishna really in the center. Mm. Kind of mechanically, we, we, Krishna's in the picture, but he's not in the center. At least he's in the picture. For most people, he's not even in the picture. But he's not in the center of the picture. We're in the center of the picture. Krishna's also there. He's nice, he's a good guy. He's one of the good ones in the picture. But he's, not the, he's not the main one, I'm the main one. Pure devotee is not even thinking, I've got to put Krishna in the center. There's nothing else in his thoughts other than Krishna. And seeing everything related to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, going to Rashima Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai. So have a great day on the street Ki Jai, wherever you're going Ki Jai. Kitchen, daily room, wherever it is, office. <laughs> <laughs>